So hidden under here, there is a DeLorean. It's a yard find, isn't it, Tim? Well, sort of, Chris. You left it here two years ago. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. And on this episode, we're going to start looking at my brand new project with Tim, which is behind me. <laughs> it's your yard find because you get to see it for the first time. For the first time. Let's <laughs> uncover it and uh, <laughs> see, see what we've got. Let's see what you just bought see two, what years got under here, two years ago. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little weathered. Just a little. But it is one of the best cars ever made. Yeah. Well, maybe not the best car ever made from a car level. Well, for old men like us. But from a cool car point of view. Yeah, because it does this. The doors work. The doors work. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to tell them the story or should I? You can tell the story. Go All right, on. so I'll tell my side of the story. So in 2019, I think it was, I found this car in St. Louis. And I have several other DeLoreans that we'll show you guys probably a little bit later. But I kind of saw this at a good price and I bought it and I kind of fell out of love with it. And me and Chris have been friends for a while. And I said, hey, do you want to join me in making bad decisions? And then you took it over and it's yeah. been sitting here ever and since. And I made a bad decision <laughs> to buy this. <laughs> I'm going to open it up and have a quick look inside and see how bad it really is. Hey. Hey. How cool those doors are. Yeah. This one works. The other one doesn't work so well. They're really complicated as well. You're showing me like there's just so much going on in here. Yeah, all that mechanical linkage just opened the doors. So it's one, got power windows. On either it's side. got two locks on either power side. Power windows, yeah. Power windows, yeah. For 1982. That big of a window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get your milkshake in and out of there. I didn't think you'd get a McDonald's for it these days. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But this is interesting. Yeah, so those are called cave paintings. So every DeLorean has one on the passenger side. And I guess Billy likes to sign each and every one of them. So I think this is chassis 1690. That would be 1,690. But the, the, the number started, I think, at 500. Okay. So from 500 on, there's no actual DeLorean number one. It's always DeLorean number 500 and one, uh, something like that. But yeah, your car is an early car. So 1690 is actually pretty early. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then in here, we have lots and lots of bits. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And as you said before, some amazing so amazing English wiring. But you said it was Indian, right? Well, Irish. Irish wiring. But well, the cars are built in Ireland, so surely that means the wiring's Irish. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Colin Chaplin might have something to do not, with it. It's not great. No, it's not great. It's really bad. Yeah. And there's not much of an interior left. No, it's like one of those exploding interiors. But then there's no engine either. No. We do have a transmission, so you have a Bluetooth engine there. Bluetooth engine. Yeah. Five-speed transmission. Yeah, your old uh, UN1, they call it. That's a Renault, I think, transaxle. That sounds like a really good quality axle, that. No, I don't think it is. But <laughs> you got a spare door that you have here. This is actually off of one of my cars. And then... Um, you got no, no rear bumper, no and tailgate. Then you, got a, you got another door with none of the stuff in it. But this is a, this is a, yeah, this is just a raw shell. But this is actually a brand new... So this is a new old stock door that I actually got a long time ago. Oh, sweet. So they pulled this one right off the shelf. This was never installed on a car. Cool. So in Texas, they have a bunch of parts that were never installed in the cars because the company went out of business. Yep. Apparently, they had enough parts to build the cars up to 85 or 86, and they only made it to 82. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's all there, you know? Just all needs there. Some, Ish. Just needs a little wax, a little love, <laughs> a little spray That's paint. That's all it needs. It's all it needs. And now we need to talk about what we're actually going to do with it. Yeah, what are you going to do with it? Apparently, this is a rather special bonnet. Yeah, it's uh, the early cars had a groove and actually earlier than that had a gas flap. So there was an actual gas door over there because if you open this, you can see your gas fill. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. More fiberglass. Yeah, more fiberglass. But we'll but show, show everyone the body of this in a minute because you've got one inside the shop. I do, I do have one or two. Sweet. <laughs> so what are we actually gonna do with it? Well, we're gonna walk in there him shop and see what he's done with some of the others and maybe come up with a cunning new plan. Sounds like a plan. Welcome to my humble abode. We have another DeLorean. Yeah. You, sir, have a problem. I have a problem. This isn't the only one in the building, but let's just talk about this one real quick. This is what you get kids when you have no stainless steel on it. So yeah, yeah so a 5.3 LS. Fiberglass tub. It's all just fiberglass. People say DeLoreans are heavy. They're not. They're, they're really basically boats. It's just a boat. It would definitely float. Yeah, it would float. You could just fill this thing with foam and you'd be and good to these, go. And these just literally bolt on. So they're super thin. Yeah, look how stainless. thin that is. 
It's like a, it's literally like a fridge face, like a stainless steel. But fridge. the doors are one solid piece. The deal, the doors are the heavy part. Yeah. And then up here you have the fiberglass tub. It continues, and it's just two pieces. They literally just made two pieces. And they just clamped them together. They actually stapled it, glued it, and then there's your body. There's actual staples there. Yeah, yeah, they stapled together, and they have a big foam bumper for the front. If you get this was actually called the safety car. So John DeLorean wanted to make the safest car in the world. He did that by having a four-inch foam pad in the front. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was the '80s, kids. <laughs> So this one's been a little bit more modified than the other one. Um, I'm actually working on trying to fix the issue of this car, which is the front suspension. They use the front sway bar as a traction rod and a sway bar all in one. So the lower control arm is connected to the sway bar and that's actually stops the control arm from tracking this way. So it controls caster with the sway bar. This sounds confusing. Yeah, it's very confusing. So when the suspension articulates up and down, the this lower, this lower control arm goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, great design idea. So it, that that's trying to get that's getting fixed right now. So this is the shell of the Dorian, but the more interesting thing is your SEMA car that you built a couple of years ago. Did I? Did I? Did I? All right, let's go next door. It's this way. This way. Never mind that thing. Never Porsches, mind this. They don't do very well on the channel. We'll ignore those. So Here this, it is. This car looked very different uh, at SEMA twenty twenty three. Um, this was the, so if you guys have ever seen a wide body stanced out DeLorean slammed on the ground, it's this car right here. So um, these were like out. Yeah. Here. Those were out there. They were, it, it was like massively stanced out. Yeah. It was, it was pretty aggressive. A lot of people liked it. Some people hated it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's doesn't have the body kit on it right now because we're actually in the process of manufacturing a full fiberglass kit. The one we brought to see was 3d printed. But we're also upgrading the front. You, Chris, you need to do this to your car. It's got a non-wobbly front yeah, bumper. Yeah, so the original DeLoreans came with urethane, urethane and, front bumpers. Yeah, this one's fiberglass. This did that and it's nice yeah. and flat. Everything's good. The biggest thing really is this guy right here. Look at that seam. The other ones are like big gaps and you can see all kinds of stuff. Um, and you've got your really cool lights. Yep, those um, are 3D printed. I'll cut we, some B-rolls we go through this just to show because you've got some, yeah, these, these are amazing. And your rear lights. Yeah, the rear lights are really wicked. cool too. Um, we, we remade the real lights and did like different things with the LEDs and stuff. Yeah. So these are solid acrylic glass and then we have a twin turbo V8 in this car. <laughs> yeah. Custom made these aluminum plenums, the headers, the full turbo system, sheet metal, the whole engine bay, um, intercoolers right here from vibrant. They're quite good with metal, aren't you? I like metal. I like it a lot. <laughs> I can't stand electricity though. So <laughs> we might make a good team. <laughs> There they are. Yeah, the turbos are down in there. One on either side. Well, one, one on this side. Yeah, I got this one out. <laughs> I'm actually in the process of raising the turbos right now. They were very close. To they the were very close to the, to the ground. Now I'm tucking them up in the car so that they don't lay it. They don't sit on the ground. Oh, so you got your carbon overlay here because there's normally glass windows here. Yep. And then this really nice louver setup. Yeah, I figured why not just show off the engine. So we did a F40 style rear louver. And then the interior has been modified slightly, not too crazy. We did a carbon backed bucket with the rose. Uh, There's a nice color in that color. Yeah, it's kind of like Miami Vice. And then we have a flat LCD There's screen. Miami Vice. Wow. Well, you know, I never got around to wearing a white suit with this car, but I'm going to do it one day. <laughs> <laughs> Digital dashboard. Digital dash, uh, Rustamod AC controls. But the rest of the interior is pretty much factory. And what gearbox in this one? This is a G96 out of a Porsche, Porsche 996. Ah, it's actually this one right here. So this is a G96 six-speed gearbox out of a Porsche. Sweet. And this is like the weapon of choice for um, the guys that are doing like K-swapped Porsches, yep. LS Porsches, and the DeLorean's the same orientation. And this, this is your bread and butter, isn't it? Is yeah, lovely titanium, titanium pipe. These are the these are the uh, dusty charge pipes that actually go in the DeLorean. This is the whole system. I had to install the whole car is just getting a continuous upgrade. Um, KW coilovers. This is going to be a must on yours. These are actually off the shelf. These are not custom made. KW. I don't know why. I don't know. So KW make coilovers. They make coilovers for, for the DeLorean. Yes, they just buy them to right fit. now. Were they? But then were they made for the Lotuses, and then they just have, no. They fit the this is for DeLorean. Wow. Yeah. Maybe so. someone at KW have the love for the DeLoreans. I I don't think so. No. 
I don't know why. And then we have the Willwood, uh, actually you can see on this side better. Willwood six piston. Oh, lovely. These are from a Miata. Believe Ready? it or not. Because the DeLorean's four on 100. So someone made the little spacer doodad here and a little adapter back here and everything else is just Miata. And everyone loves a Miata, as you guys saw in my previous videos when I did the electric one. Yeah. Now, what are we gonna do with my DeLorean? Let's LS twin turbo swap it. No. No, we can't do that. Everyone's done it. Yeah. I think you need to do a Honda engine. Maybe. Or an electric motor. So we're thinking, I think, we do V6 Honda. Yeah, J35. Twin, twin turbo, which is, you know, your, which you love doing. Yeah. And then we'll do a Tesla motor in the front. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get what out are of you it. talking about? <laughs> You're you gonna have sounded more American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll do an English accent. Yeah. I can't do an English accent. But there's gonna be some big mods have to be done. Yeah. So if you have a look at the other one in there. Yeah. Heavily modified. There's there's no room to put a motor. The, the V6 front. is easy, obviously. So the V6 is shorter. Yep. So we shouldn't have to cut any of this stuff. Yeah, the V6 uh, just you're right there. Good to go. But this front bit is where the issue lies. Just there. Yeah. So thinking is just cut it off. Sure. And then what? And just put a different subframe. Just weld it. Yeah. Because <laughs> as you, you've just explained, this doesn't work well. No, it doesn't. So we may as well put a completely different subframe in there from a different car. Yeah. That just fits. Well, the initial concept right now is to do a hybrid, but I guess you guys will have to watch the rest of the episodes to find out how you do it. Yeah. So this is the first episode. You're probably not going to see another one for about a year. But let us know in the comments if you want us to push on and do this, because if there's enough interest, might crack on with it a bit sooner. Thank you very much for watching. And what is your YouTube channel? Mosseri Autocraft. There you go. I'll see you guys again soon. See ya.